Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, and this is a midweek snack for you guys. We're going to go back and take a look at forms again in React. So we, in our original video, we took a simple form. It had a name, phone number, and the type of pizza that you want, and we implemented it three different ways. One with use reducer, basic React, and then we implemented it with Formic and Final Form to see how much better it was with a form manager. And the response is great, got a lot of great comments, including some around, hey, you missed one, and that was React Hook Form. I'll take one comment, for example, Ljug Lumpa writes, hey, Jack, nice walkthrough, thank you. You should really check out React Hook Form, though. Compared to Formic, it's super clever and less verbose. All right, well, let's see if Ljug Lumpa is right by re-implementing our form once again with React Hook Form. Okay, so starting at the top, we have our name, which has is required. And then within phone number, it has to be three numbers, then three numbers and four numbers with dashes. Then we have our pizza selector, and it's got a preview in case you didn't know what a pepperoni pizza looked like. And then, of course, our submit button. Where's the pizza? Exactly. And here's what we're going to use in this example, React hook form. Very nice. First thing to do is create a React app called Hook Test. Next, we'll bring in the pizzas. That's just all the pizza images. Then we'll bring in Material UI Core and React Hook Form. So Material UI is our component set, and React Hook Form is well those hooks, right? Okay. So I'm going to use the state example to kind of farm off of. All that code is available. And we're just going to grab this top stuff. That's the different material UI components that we're going to use, and also the list of all the pizzas, and then some styling. And we'll just start off with a container and the CSS baseline. And then we'll go and get our your best buys, our always at fries pizza line. Drop that in there. Okay, good start. So the next thing we have is a text field. Let's go copy that out, put that in there. But we're going to put within a form element in this case, just because, you know, we're a form. So we're going to take out value because React Hook Form manages that for us, as it does also on change. So let's bring in use form from React Hook Form. Fire that up. Of course, we have to bring in our classes first. No problem. And the first thing we're going to get out of use form is register. We're going to use that on the actual inputs. So let's go and add in some default values in there as, as part of the initializer for use form. So we're going to give register the ref of the input field. And we're also going to say that this field is required. Now, in order for this to work, you have to give it a name. So I'm going to set that to name. And we're also going to go and connect it with errors. And those errors, we're going to go get from use form. So there's a bunch of stuff that comes out of use form that we're going to use. Okay, interestingly, we're not getting the current value in there. Looks good. I mean, you got the text field, but we're not getting the value. So what's going on there? Well, this is actually a material UI thing. So if we change this to input directly, just a regular input field, you can see it works. Boom, boom. So if you got a regular input field, you just use ref. If you're wrapping an input field, which is what material UI is doing, then you got to get the ref of the actual input itself. And material UI exposes that as input ref. So let's drop that in there. Haha, -ha, now it works. Awesome. But we're not getting any errors. And we've got it hooked up to error, which is right. And we got errors coming out of use form. What's the problem here? So the problem is this. You actually get a bunch of options around when the validations are applied. By default, they're applied on submit. I'm not sure I believe in that default, but that's what the default is. So I'm going to change that to on change. It's going to validate anytime you make a change. You get three options. You get on change, 
which is every keystroke. You get on blur, which is anytime you move away from a field, and you also get on submit. So we're going to do this on change, and it looks great. Next thing to try out is handle submit. We're just going to drop that in on the form on the on submit, and that would that's where you'd basically uh, put in your you know, your submission code. I'm not going to go into too much depth there, but I just want to show you that this is like a complete-ish example. All right, let's go do one more thing before we get too far. I'm going to add in the custom dev tooling that you get. So we're going to bring in React Hook Form Dev Tools. Then we're going to import that. Drop it on the page. And we also need to hook it up to this control that we get from UseForm. All right, very cool. You see that thing on the right-hand side now? That's the RHF, React Hook Form Dev Tools. And that shows us all the different fields and how they're doing. And of course, we only have the one field at this point, and that's name. So let's check that out. It's got a value of Jack currently. Just start playing with it. We can see that now there's an error on it. Different states, whether it's touch, whether it's dirty. This is really handy. All right, let's go and add another field. Go and bring in the phone number. Now, in this case, I want to apply a regex to it. So let's go back over to our use state example, pull out that regex, drop it in there for the pattern, and that's all it takes, which is really nice. That is wow, awesome. Okay, again, we get some errors in there. Everything's looking good. All the validations are looking great so far. Awesome. Let's bring in our button. In this case, I'm just going to use the errors that we already have to check whether we should disable this or not. Oh, uh, looking great. Where's the pizza? That's right. That means we got to go bring in our pizza selector. So let's go grab that code of the use state example. And we'll remove some stuff from Radio Group. Don't really need that. It's going to be managing that for us. All the rest looks good, except for we got to go now fix the image. So in order to do that, how do we know at any given time what the current value of pizza is? Well, for that, we're going to use watch. And watch basically allows us to watch that value. So if we can drop that in there. We can say we're going to go watch pizza. And that sets the current value of the alt to the current value of pizza with image afterwards. Of course, now we got to go and do our little find trick to go and find the object for the pizza. So we'll just again use watch pizza and then take the output of that find and use image on it, which is the actual image PNG string. And that looks great. Awesome. But now if we click over there, not really changing much. Clearly, React Hook Form doesn't know what the heck we're doing over there. So another thing we can do is we can use a component in React Hook Form called Controller. So let's bring that in. So then we take that radio group and we bring it into the as property of the control. And then the control defines the name of the field as well as also bringing in that control value that we passed off to DevTools. Okay, looking really good. And now we can see the values changing in our dev tools. Beautiful. The last thing to do is to go and do that stringify that we've done in all the other examples. And to do that, we're just going to use get values. And that gets all your current values. Nice. Really, really nice. Now that is a really clean forms API. Well, gotta say, for my money, El Jug Lumpel is right. It is super clever, and it is less verbose. I'm a fan. React Hook Form is good stuff. I'm probably going to end up using it for my form. So thank you so much for your comments and recommendations. I did want to point out another one, which was from Windmaster421. They put in a comment kind of plugging their gotta go form uh, NPM library, which is an implementation of what I was talking about at the end of the last form video, and that's a meta 
form generator. The idea being that you give it a meta description of all the fields that you want, their validations and whatever. You pass it off to the component and it handles everything, the layout and everything else. So very interesting stuff. Go check it out. There's a link in the description, of course. And thank you for that. Um, I did have another little tech recommendation for you. I don't know if you are a Mac person. I am. So this is my Mac. And uh, it's one of the newer MacBook Pros. It's got USB-C uh, ports on it. And I've been running into a lot of problems with overheating on this. In particular, you'll go, when you go to the activity monitor, you'll see the kernel task is freaking out and using 100% of the CPU because it's trying to cool the system down. And you know what? It turns out to be, it turns out to be where you put your USB-C adapters and your power input. If you put them all on the left-hand side, you put the USB-C uh, probably you know, port adapter that you have because you know there's not enough ports on this thing, and they're not USB-A ports. Uh, if you put that on the same left-hand side with your power, you're going to get the overheating. So uh, just move those those cables around, and you should be good. All right, I hope that helps. Thank you, as always, for your comments and suggestions. As always, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime a new one of these videos is out. In the meantime, of course, stay home, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.